Blessings everyone, it's that time, it's that time for another interview with Girlfriends Has Got to Homeschooling. I'm your host, I'm Angela Jordan Perry and we are getting our guest on here for our interview and she is ready, Freddie, wow, okay, she's here. All right, I hope you all have had a great day, my day just passed. So um, anyway, here we go. Join it again today. Here we go, girl. You are on it. That was fast. <laughs> I'm All right. here. All right. Are you ready, my friend? I am ready. Let's do this. All right. All right. We're going to do it. Okay. All right. So, girlfriends, you know the drill. You know the deal. All right. So, you are going to share Hit the share button. It's right on the bottom. It should be to your left because sharing is caring. Get the word out so that people who are considering homeschooling can hear this content and those who are already homeschooling can go ahead and um, get some encouragement because it's going to be a fire. I'm telling you, it's going to be fire. She's going to lay the bombs, lay the bombs. So here we go. We're going to get ready to get started. Let me get my pencil there. All right. Three, two, one. Girlfriends is Guide to Homeschooling. I am turned up for another interview. Woo! And so this is by chance, yes, two interviews in one day, one day. So, you know, you all chew it up, take it in. It's some good stuff. So here we go. We have our special guest. I'm going to tell you first who we are popping up in your news feed this time of the evening. So this is Girlfriends is Guide to Homeschooling, and here is where we give voice to those who are of the African homeschooling diaspora and of the marginalized homeschooling. And like I said, I'm your host, Angela Jordan Perry. I'm a homeschooling mom myself of eight children. We've already graduated three. We mm. are, <laughs> are self-sustaining farmers here in the northwest part of the state of South Carolina where we make our home. Uh, I'm married to my husband now for uh, 26 years in July and another month. Can you believe it? I can't believe it. He was my first sweetheart at 16. Oh, Lord. Been together for 29 years. The same person. Yep. The same person. I still love him. <laughs> and um, I'm trying to get there. It, just keep going. One day at a time. One day at a time. One love you at a time. One I forgive you at a time. One I forgive, forgive me at a time. Just one at a time, girl. That's all. But, um, so let's see. Oh, here, my purpose-driven life is to make a positive impact on thousands of, thousands of homeschoolers worldwide. And I do that in part right here on Girlfriends Has Got to Homeschooling, uh, where I provide this platform. And then also I serve here in the state of, of South Carolina, um, giving homeschooling families legal rights to homeschool in this state. So I do that as well. And then adding to the, the platform is educating our own. You all stay tuned. So we're just revving that out, revving it up, revving it up. We already got a little teaser uh, commercial out there. If you're not seeing it, go search up educating our own. Okay. So I won't go into details about that. So that's just a little bit about me. Um, but tonight we have our special guest and her name is Tammy Polk. So Tammy, are you ready to make it happen, girlfriend? Yes, ma'am. Let's oh, go. She's ready. So let me tell you about Tammy. Tammy is a married homeschooling mama of three girls, ages 14, 10, and 5. Her homeschooling journey began in 2000 when she made the decision to homeschool before she even had a family. So when she is not busy lovingly harassing her family, she runs two businesses as a home. I think that's changed probably. Um, she runs two businesses as a homeschool consultant and a business coach. So aside from being an awesome wife and mother, uh, Tammy's major claim to fame is that she is the proud author, you all, the proud author of 23 books. Yes, 23 books all written between September 2015 and I guess as a recent. Um, she'll tell us more about that. So while also working as a substitute teacher and as a virtual assistant, she enjoys playing and creating board games with uh, while helping her family 
uh, her helping the other families um, to excel. So I had just told uh, the girlfriends just a little bit about you, Tammy. My goodness, please tell us more if there's more to tell. And uh, then let us know how in the world you really got started homeschooling before you had a family. How did that come down? Okay. Um, well, first of all, I am still only at two businesses, but okay. they're kind of the whole octopus thing. <laughs> so it um, it spins out. I, I also um, help writers um, get their books out. Um, so, you know, people who um, usually think I'm nuts, which is okay, um, will come to me and be like, okay, how in the blue blazes <laughs> are you still sane? Um, so, yes, it is 23 books between September of 2015, and I'm actually waiting on UPS to bring me the book crew for book 23 now. Um, so, um, it is 23, and I write on all things life, faith, family, business, um, and homeschool. I do have one homeschool title. Um, the reason why I said that my decision to homeschool came before I had a family is because it did. Um, back in 2000, in college, I was taking a foundation of education course as an elective in my psychology degree, and there was a presentation in that class from two young ladies in my class who had attended a school board meeting. And they came back and just the the things that they shared um, that happened in that meeting really burned me up. Just to give you an example, they said that there was a teacher there who was lobbying for more textbooks in his in in his class and for his growing class and he was starting to spend his own money to get those textbooks and they tabled his discussion and they tabled it because the following week was the superintendent of school's birthday. So the whole rest of the meeting was dedicated to figuring out what they were going to do for him. Hmm. So as I sat there, we had to write a reflection paper after every presentation that we heard. I was just like, you know what? This is not something that I wanted. To I'm like, no, these are not people that I want deciding or having an impact on the educational future of my kids because you showed me then by tabling a working educator's concern, which was very legitimate, that mm -hmm. you don't care about the education of children. So when I wrote that reflection paper, the very last paragraph said, I can tell you now, should I have children in the future, I will be homeschooling. Hmm. And the funny part about that is I found that reflection paper on my computer on the first day of homeschooling our oldest daughter. Hmm. But before then, we got the runaround really bad here where we live. Um, we tried to do Head Start when she was three. They told me that I made too much to qualify for Head Start. Then I tried the voluntary pre-K when she was four. She scored too high on the screening test. So come kindergarten, I had found the school that I, I really wanted her to go to. At the time, I was working um, as a um, school-aged daycare teacher, so I had built a lot of rapport and relationship with different schools in our community. Found one that I really liked, 
went through the the process of of open enrollment because the school was out of our did out of our area out of our district and come time to start school we didn't have the paperwork so i called send her to the school that she's zoned for and then once your transfer is approved, move her to the other school. And I says, well, when is that going to happen? They said, well, it'll be about November. I says, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> you want me to put a five-year-old in one school for three months, uproot her. That's more school supplies, more uniforms, culture shop adjustment period, everything. I said, well, what if I want her to stay where she is? And they said, well, that's not your decision. Mm. They said, that's not your, that, that's not your decision. You have to, you have to move her. And I said, that's not my only decision. I got off work that day. I called a friend of mine, former coworker, who I knew was homeschooling, told her what happened, and I said, help. She gave me a list of books to check out from the library. She told me, you know, who to call, um, you know, who was the easiest, you know, to deal with and everything. So I took that road. Um, first grade, we tried again. The school was right around the corner from our house. They wouldn't let her in. Mm. And they get this whole big runaround. But once I called the board, they were like, oh, well, we don't have the space. And I'm like, why did you just say that? <laughs> so I go home and I tell my husband, and he just looks at me, and mm -mm, how much money do you need? I'm like, you don't want me to go back? No. How much money do you need? Um, we let her go to school in second grade. Um, she tested above grade level on um, on the standardized testing, but the school that she was in was doing nothing for her. Mm. So we brought her back home. Um, so during that time, um, of course, I, I had two more. And when it came to them, it was a no-brainer. As a matter of fact, our five-year-old um, will be starting in the in the fall. We had to wait for her because she has a December birthday. So that's kind of how I got to homeschool. Gotcha, gotcha. So you said your five-year-old has to wait till the fall. Is she going to public school? Or is she homeschooling? No, all of our girls are homeschooled. All they three. all are. All, mm -hmm. of, all of them are. So how was it when you first got started, um, Tammy? You know, you were like, I'm going to do, I'm going to do it. Help me. Tell me what I need, what I got to do. My husband, your husband gave you the money. So how was it? <laughs> um, actually, it wasn't as, as strenuous um, as I thought it would be. Because one thing that I learned very, very quickly um, was that most kindergarten classrooms still ran like daycares. So mm -hmm. what I did was I took the daycare schedule um, that my daughter was used to, and I used that as our homeschool schedule. Now, I mean, mm -hmm. I took out, you know, certain things that we – wouldn't do you know at at home and I let that guide me really for the first two years um because one as I said it was something that she was used to and then two it made things a lot easier um, and then our second, our middle daughter um, was about 
about 17 or 18 months at the time. And I don't know what it was, but like clockwork, she wanted to go down for a nap <laughs> at 9.30 and she would sleep until about 11.45. Sweet. <laughs> so I'm getting homeschooling, washing dishes, doing laundry, making lunch, <laughs> like oh, oh. everything possible within that two hours and 15 minutes. And she did it every day without fail. Nice. <laughs> It was it was a beautiful thing. I tell you, it was beautiful. Yeah, that that's a that's a big 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 score. <laughs> so uh, so Tammy, take us into your homeschool. Let tell us, uh, girlfriends, you know your habit. What's your daily habit in your you know in your day to day homeschooling? Um, our habit is my kids. Well, at least my little ones are very early risers. Um, and I do mean early. I'm talking about like 6.15, still dark outside early. Um, so I start their day, especially my little ones, with books. Um, we have a home library of probably close to 300 books. Um, so they have a stack of books in their room um, that they that they read through, um, you know, all of you know all of the time. So that's kind of how we start. You know, we start our day. Um, we usually get into lessons about eight thirty. Um, that is that's kind of when they start getting a little antsy and want to do something. So I've learned that that's a good time to start. Um, our oldest daughter is actually um, in high school and is in an online high school. So she's basically working um, independently uh, with access to a tutor. And then, of course, she has us. So usually our homeschool day goes from 8.30 until about 12, um, simply because our two youngest girls are environmental learners. So there's not a whole lot of sit down things with them. Um, and I, I tell people often, my two younger girls, I did not teach them how to read. One learned by muting the TV and reading the closed captioning. Wow. And the, the smallest one caught on and learned from her sister. So wow. when we started our homeschool year, and I started including my young, our youngest daughter. There was a lot of things that she already knew simply from being around her sister. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that they are definitely, um, definitely in environmental learners. Mm -hmm. So here I am you know, wondering what phonics program I'm going to use or what reading <laughs> program I'm going to use. And right. I turn around and they're both taking green eggs and ham and each one of them are reading a page. Wow. They're taking turns reading a page. And I'm like, okay, next. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> good. There's, there's a lot of things that, um, that, that, they, already, um, that they already knew. Um, so, um, let me see with, like I said, with my oldest daughter, we're using an online high school. Um, I have been using self paced, um, instructional material with her since she was about eight years old. 
Um, so she pretty much grew up um, knowing how to work independently. And that helps when you have more than one child in the house. Oh. Um, teaching them as early as possible to not call your name 900 times. <laughs> yep. Yeah. It definitely helps. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's um pretty good. I mean, and that sounds like a good amount of time, a good routine, 8.30 to 12. I mean, that's a norm. That's one of the things homeschoolers, um, you know, I, I always ask, how long is your school day? And if they're telling me stuff like for little kids, elementary, six hours and stuff like that, I'm like, oh, my goodness. No, please, please no. You know, uh, you get to choose. Unless you're in a state that requires a certain amount of time to school, for the most right. part, you know, elementary, hour, you know, kindergarten. And I do, generally it's like a, a, a hour, I'm, I'm sorry, 30 minutes for each, 15 to 30 minutes each additional you add 15 to 30 minutes depending on the grade. So you keep adding. So kindergarten, 30 minutes, add 15 or 30 for the next level. I mean, it's kind of that way, but definitely um, not four hours is excellent. Um, and the thing about it is one thing that I discovered with my daughter when we brought her home after the um, year of school in second grade, if you have your kids in a public or a private school, they're only getting four to six hours of classroom instruction anyway. Mm. When you take out lunch, recess, extra classes, bathroom breaks, when you take all of that out, Mm -hmm. Your yeah. child is only getting four to six hours of classroom instruction a day anyway, and they are not doing every subject every day. Right, right, right. And six hours is a lot, uh, really a lot. It's probably uh, really close to, and they're gone, what, seven, eight hours, I guess? I don't know. I don't even know how long they're in school, but it's a good right. part of the day. But um, you can knock it out easily in hours um, within a day. You so can. Um, yeah, very easily. So, but girlfriends, let me let you know this is girlfriends has got the homeschooling. If you tuning in and see us in your news feed, I'm Angela Jordan Perry, the host of the show, and I have the privilege of having Tammy Polk on. Girlfriends has got the homeschooling today. Uh, I forget where you're out of, Tammy. Where are you from? Memphis, Tennessee. Memphis, Tennessee. Yeah, 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 yeah. So um, we have this amazing author and, um, you know, coach, business owner. This this lady has it going on, got it going on. So we're going to dig in a little bit deeper. So let me ask you this. Take us to your worst, 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 worst day of homeschooling. Now you've been homeschooling. How long has it been? It's since 2008. So this is year 10. Uh, okay, 10, going on 10 years. All right. So take us, Tammy, to your worst day of homeschooling. So bad you were ready to quit, throw in a tower, towel, send them off somewhere to some school, somebody else's house, somewhere. You were done with it. You were over it. Take us to that day uh, where you almost quit, but you didn't. You didn't quit. And that's why you're this amazing homeschooling mom that you are today. Tell us about it. Actually, it was right before we got started. Um, 2007 and 2008 were very, very tough years for my family. Um, just to kind of give you a timeline of what I mean, um, July of 2007, my mother died suddenly. Um, after she passed away, I found out that I was 20 weeks pregnant. Um, after that, um, my husband's stepmother passed away in October. His mm -hmm. favorite aunt passed away in February of 2008, right after um, we welcomed baby girl number two. My paternal grandfather died in April mm. <laughs> of 2008. Um, and then in July 
of, yes, July of 2008, two days before our oldest daughter turned five, we lost our third daughter mm. um, midway through um, the pregnancy. Um, so if I had to say what my worst homeschool day was, I would have to say that it was right there at the beginning because when you're trying to mm. maintain that continuity you know for your kids and that sense of normalcy and stability you don't have time to think grieve cry mm. nothing <laughs> nothing at all um because you have to make sure that they're getting what they need. So hmm. we started homeschooling the first Monday in August, which was literally about two weeks after losing the baby. Hmm. And it was just, it, it was nuts. It was absolutely nuts. Wow. Wow. And you still you stuck in there. You got through it. That that is a rough patch. Yeah. Sounds like a very rough patch. Um, so take us to your most memorable day, uh, Tammy. The day where you know all of that maybe paled. I mean, the reality of what happened during that time, which grieved your heart and all that you were going through. You know, um, it really pales in comparison to this one, this day or a series of days that just mo move your heart, move you to a place in your emotions that's just like, this is why I do what I do right here. This is why I do it. Take us to that day, Tammy. It was probably about two years ago. I was taking my oldest daughter to the doctor and I was actually on the phone um, with a lady who needed homeschool help, and I got a text message that I couldn't read right away. So here I am in 8 o'clock traffic on a Friday, on a Tuesday. Yes, on a Tuesday, trying to get my child to the doctor. And the whole time I'm driving, she's tapping me on my shoulder like this. She's, like, she's just tapping me. And I looked down at the phone, and she had sent a text message to somebody um, who had texted me on my personal phone saying that they needed homeschool help. And she, I kid you not, this was a text message my daughter sent. It said, okay, great. I'm on another client call at the moment, but do let her know that I will call her soon. Thanks and have a great day. <laughs> she was 12 wow. at the time. And I'm like, high five. I know, perfect. But, <laughs> but the reason why I consider that as one of my best days is because it solidified the fact that something was getting through. Hmm. Simply because as I'm teaching her academics, that was a life thing right there. Hmm. She knew enough of what mommy did and what mommy was doing to be able to articulate it that way. Mm -hmm. She even used correct punctuation, girl. I was excited. <laughs> <laughs> but that that was one of one of my best days. Mm, that's cool. That is really exciting. That is, and that um that she could articulate that and get that through, and uh, without even skipping a beat, sounds like she was just like on it, and you didn't have to even prompt her. She was on it. So yeah, those are life lessons and life skills that our kids learn every day, just living life together. I mean. I, you know, I talked about that earlier on the show. So um, that's beautiful, beautiful. Well, here um, are some questions, Tammy, just to pick your, your brain, some quick questions. Uh, you can give us one or two answers, uh, sentence answers for them. Um, so 
Uh, all of you girlfriends, again, I just ask you to be sure to hit the share button. It's on the bottom to your, it should be on your left. Just hit the share button because sharing, uh, sharing is caring. Uh, and giving this information out to someone who's looking for, who may need it, may not even know they need it, uh, maybe considering homeschooling. And uh, just, you know, this may be a blessing and encouragement to them or someone who's in the think of homeschooling now and just get some insights from uh, Tammy and all that she shares. So be sure to hit the share button and get them connected with girlfriends that's got homeschooling. So um, uh, Tammy, yeah, tell us your, your most favorite quote or mantra that you use every day that helps you to get through your homeschooling journey. Hmm. I would have to say it is the one that says, um, teach me and I will forget, show me. And I'll remember, but if you involve me, I'll understand. Mm. Say that one more time. Say it again. Teach me and I will forget. And I will forget. Uh -huh. Show me and I will remember. Involve me and I will understand. Good. I got that. That's profound. Very good. I like that too. That's good. Um, what is something that's unique to the Polk's homeschool that you know that you all are proud about? This is something that you all do that maybe sets you all apart from the rest of the from the homeschoolers. I would have to say that as far as our little ones, about half of the things that we use um, curriculum and material wise, we created ourselves. Wow. Okay. That's cool. Yeah, most of the, the resources that we use is something that I developed to solve some kind of of ed learning impasse, if you will. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, do you all plan to homeschool your children all the way through to the end, you know, through, you know, college or, or what have you starting their own business? Yes. And actually, the, the business part is already there. Uh, my oldest daughter um, will be putting out a line of, um, of journals featuring her art. And she will be putting out a coloring book here this summer. So the business oh. part has already started. Um, so, oh. yes, we do plan, plan to um, homeschool to the end. As a matter of fact, our oldest daughter will be in the 10th grade this fall. Gotcha. Neat. Oh, neat. Oh, um, tell us a favorite curriculum or a book or um, something that's in your library that has helped you in your homeschooling journey. Kathy Duffy's top 100 homeschool picks. Um, I think it's up to 102 homeschool picks. That book saved my sanity um, in, in the beginning. Um, as a matter of fact, whenever I'm doing a homeschool consultation, it is actually a book that I give out. Okay. Um, simply because of not only the the resource list that she gives, but just the things that she has you to work through, especially from a mindset standpoint, but to really figure out um, what it is that you really um, want in your homeschool. That's definitely one book that I that I hold on to. Good deal, good deal. Um, what is the best piece of advice uh, that you've received uh, that has aided you during your homeschooling journey, Tammy? My homeschool doesn't have to look like anybody else's. <laughs> That's huge. I mean, it's simple, but it's so huge, it doesn't. <laughs> it does it right. uh, what is your favorite resource or app or online um, you know resource that you use or TV uh, that has helped you to have a successful homeschooling it is one that 99.999% of America knows and loves very well YouTube <laughs> uh huh <laughs> yes absolutely um, let's see, you got a favorite book you want to recommend to us, uh, you know, that you feel like helped you on your homeschooling journey. Maybe it's that book by Kathy Duffy or is, is there anything else that you can recommend? 
There was a book written by Heidi St. John, um, I'm tr and I'm trying to get the title right in my head. It is The Busy Mom's Guide to Daylight. Um, and in it, you know, she talks about um, really serving the home part of homeschool. Mm. You know, not letting your marriage die. Mm -hmm. That's the boundaries with the kids and the rest of the family. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. Good deal. The Busy Mom's Guide to Daylight. All right. right. Good deal. All right, well, here we are. We're on our last question, Tammy. The million-dollar question. You ready? Yep. Are you ready for it, girl? I'm ready. You ready? All right. So, Tammy, if you had to start all over again, back to day one of your homeschooling journey, but you have your current wisdom, knowledge, skills, convictions, insights, what would be the first thing that you would change in your homeschooling or be sure to implement this time around? I would have just home homeschooled completely from the jump. I would have left the, the trying with the schools out completely. That's one thing um, that I, that I know um, that I would change and change immediately. Mm. Just don't even stop. Don't stop. Collect $200. Just, don't, just, keep, just keep going. Nope. Mm, nope. Straight gotcha. to homeschool. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. <laughs> no colors, no flavors, no junky stuff. <laughs> just keep going. Keep going. And you all, girlfriends, mm. you got to rewind and go back and hear you know, why she says what she said, because she fills us in on her journey at the beginning of her connection to public school. And um, you, you just got to hear, Re rewind it again and go back and listen to it. So um, very, very, very good stuff. Very good stuff, Tammy. Thank you so much. So any last words of advice you want to give the girlfriends and um, let us know how they can contact you if they want to continue the conversation and, you know, ask you any questions. Uh, and then finally, let us know what you, you know, involved in, what you got your hands in that you want to uh, let this village know about. One word of advice, and, and this is something that I say as a business coach, but it applies to homeschool as well. One thing you have to understand is that everybody's blueprint is not yours. Mm -hmm. Everybody's blueprint is, is not yours. Nobody knows your kids better than you do. You've been with them forever. Mm -hmm. So you know what works. So don't let the shiny object syndrome of homeschooling get you. That's why we have so many curriculum sales today. <laughs> Is because everybody is trying to follow somebody else's blueprint. No. Mm -hmm. Everybody's yes. blueprint is not yours. Um, as far as what I am involved in, that is a loaded question. Um, <laughs> that is a loaded question. Um, um, as I said, I am the author of 23 books. Um, and I would say 16 of which are listed on Amazon, Barnes and Noble and Books A Million. Um, or if you want an autographed copy, just say, Hey, sign one and send it to me. Um, again, I write on all things, life, faith, family, homeschool, and a little bit of fiction. Um, as far as, um, homeschooling, you can follow my homeschool page, Choice Home Education consulting um i put tips over there i questions um encouraging stuff you know all of that other um good stuff and you can check out what services i offer there as well um if you are a homeschool mom and you're wondering what else can i do with these talents that i have but 
make my house and homeschool look awesome. Um, I invite you to um, look into my Every Woman is a Businesswoman boot camp. Um, I have one cycle that's starting this coming Monday and one that is starting on Monday, June 11th. Um, basically, we are answering the questions of who, what, when, where, why, how, and how much. Um, we get into things of um, distinguishing what our talents really are. For example, um, what do you know how to do and enjoy doing? I mean, it has to fit both because we all know you can know how to do something and absolutely hate it. <laughs> mm -hmm. So those are just the kinds of things that um, – that we talk about, you know, how we can build a family economy, you know, recognizing the, the skills and talents and gifts that are present in your own household and how not doing so is costing you money. Mm. Um, thing, things like that, that we, uh, that we talk about. Um, and then after the boot camp, we go into a, a, a four week accountability phase where I help you to achieve one goal that you set during I'm um, the boot camp, and we do our best to make it happen within four weeks. Good deal. Good deal. Good deal. All right. Well, girlfriends, you are the average of the five people you hang out with. And this hour, you've been hanging out with Tammy Polk out of Memphis, Tennessee. You also listen, keep up the momentum. Continue to connect with positive, positive, positive influences. Make sure you get your strong sister circle where you can, yeah. uh, you know, draw from, draw from positivity. And then also you be that positive influence that others can draw from. It's a continual give and take, give and take, you know. So uh, keep up the momentum, your girlfriend. You can do it. And so uh, Tammy, just want to say, Girlfriends is Guide to Homeschooling. We're so grateful to you and appreciate you for giving of your time, your wisdom, uh, your insights and energy uh, to encourage and inform this uh, platform, reaching thousands of homeschoolers worldwide. So thank you so much. I appreciate you. I really do. I appreciate Not a problem. you. So, so thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, Girlfriends, let me tell you, as always, remember, to teach a child is to touch a life. And as we homeschool, we not only touch a life, we shape the future through our efforts of homeschooling. So keep making a positive impact day after day, year after year. And just keep in mind exactly what Tammy said. She mentioned that, you know, uh, you don't have to copy anyone else's blueprint, you know, figure out your your jam, I say like that, figure out your homeschool jam and then just rock it, rock it, rock it, rock it, love it. Um, embrace it and make it your unique own, your own self, your own look, okay? So do that. Again, don't forget to share, 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 hit the share button, even on my replay uh, viewers. Thank you for coming in and seeing us on replay and, and having this time with us. Uh, be sure to go over to Facebook and like us there, follow and like, and then also go to YouTube, subscribe to the channel, Girlfriends has Got to Homeschooling, our podcast where we drop four podcasts a week um, at Girlfriends Chat. Uh, you can find us on all podcasts, just look for D, G, the number two, H, dash, Angela J. Perry, and you'll find us. Great little nuggets, you know, 10 minute or less um, podcast interview where you can just get a quick little burst of, okay, I'm ready. All right, great. I needed that little nugget, okay? All right, girlfriends. So have a good night. And um, until our next interview, peace to all of my sisters and my brothers. Thank you, Tammy. I appreciate you. Take care. All Bye. right, to the next time, y'all. Bye-bye.